Hey guys and girls and other sentient life forms that may, or may not be tuning in from other galaxies and solar systems afar. It's Wayne Santos, one of the editors over at CGM, and I am here with the ever verbose Trekken. Woo! There. He's proven how verbose he is. Yeah. And this is the uh, opening, I guess we'll call it like the newbie tutorial area. No, is that where we of, are? Uh, Witcher 3. Yeah. So I'm surprised that you introduced aliens. Do you think aliens would watch our, this video? They don't have a choice. What? Because, you know, we just indiscriminately broadcast everything. You know, it's like in Anywhere? all directions, you, yeah, unilaterally. So Ooh, it doesn't like. really matter. It's like you know, if the aliens have the ability to listen in on like, you know, radio and internet broadcasts, they can pick this up. Okay, so I know nothing about a Witcher, absolutely zero. Okay. Um, so this will be me critiquing, making offhanded comments, and you will, of course, educate the ignorance yes. in me. Okay, well then, the first thing that you might want to know about the Witcher is that unlike most fantasy games that you know, we play on consoles and computers, this one is actually based on a fairly successful Polish fantasy series. Oh, yeah. well, that's yeah. different. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, that it started out with like short stories and then expanded into novels. And Geralt, which is the name of the character here. Can we get a close-up on Geralt here? Uh, no, actually, that's about as close as it gets. Okay, there, I can bring in the camera a little bit more. But you know what? Geralt. He's looking pretty handsome. I thought first from the back, I thought he, we were playing a Legolas-like character. Yeah. I was like, <gasps> Lord of the Rings, white hair, maybe a Targaryen. Yeah. Uh, but not quite so much. This scruff is, uh, oh, didn't okay. see that here's, coming. Here's, here's an interesting point of trivia for you. That scruff, right. his beard grows in real time in this game. That's so, frightening. So, well, okay, I shouldn't say real time. It's accelerated growth. But you know, it's like if you leave his face alone and just ignore it and just keep playing for several hours, eventually he sports a full beard. Which Within you minutes, get sh trimmed and shaved. You got, so you have to go tr get yourself trimmed and you, shaved. You have to get it trimmed and shaved, or else you know. Exactly. God, I love how realistic video yeah. games come. Soon I'll have to go to the bathroom for these people, and you know get. Oh, oh, people have been hanged. So yeah, this is the third game in the series. Hence, Obviously, hence the reason that it's called Witcher Three. But I think one of the most interesting things about this particular game is that even if you've been following the first two games right. and you know all about them, right. there's a lot of stuff in this game that they've been pulling from the novels. So if I read the novels, so, you can find some... So if you've read the novels, then you'll be like, oh my god, I totally understand everything that's going on. And if you've only played the games, then even you will be in the dark going like, who are these characters? What are they talking about? Are, are you they, a novel reader? Did thing? you read the novel? No, this? I've, I've been forced to do my homework because I also got frustrated over like, you know, not knowing what a lot of this stuff was. Um, the main point of this game, and it's, um, it's, it's actually a, a pretty simple main point, is there is a character named Siri who... Say Siri? Uh, her name oh, God, her, rabbits! Her full name is Cirilla. Oh, but it's uh, like yeah, but they call her Siri. It's spelled with a C. Oh. And Ciri has what they call the blood of the elders in her. Basically, she's got the blood of gods inside her. She's extremely powerful, and there are various factions in the world that want to use her for their own nefarious personal oh, agendas. Jack. And Geralt, over here, has basically been her adopted father for many, many years. But then she went off and like, you know, did her own thing because she was in danger and had to run from these various factions. And now, in this third game, those factions are catching up with her, and Geralt is like, you know what, I'm going to look after my adopted daughter and see whether or not I can help. Which, you know, like I said, Ciri is a character that's been mentioned in the books. She's never appeared in the previous games, and because for the first two games, Geralt had amnesia, he didn't mention her either. So this oh. is brand new territory, even for the guys that are very familiar. So it's kind of convoluted. Yeah, it is convoluted. Um, they tell you just enough to sort of, you know, get going with the, all right, you know, adopted daughter, I'm supposed to rescue her, okay, fine. But, you know, like all the minute details about what's going on and the exact relationships and dynamics, you pretty so much have to go So where is he going now? What's, the, what's his mission? Okay, so right now, wonder. because this is the beginning of the game, we're in this newbie area that's called White Orchard, where you can learn to do all kinds Ooh, of stuff. Ooh, Epona just appeared. And um, this is his horse, Roach. Roach? He's, he calls his horse Roach. He's had many horses. Roach? He's That's had many horses over the years, and he always calls them Roach. Well, so this is very Zelda-esque. Yeah, this this isn't even the not first as attractive though. Ever had, yeah. I like Epona. Can you rename the horse? No. Mm. no. Uh, Turned off already. Which is one of the other things about this game is that because it's all based on an existing fiction like Game of Thrones, oh. they can't go around uh. just changing the names and all that sort of thing because otherwise, people get you know very very angry. Who names their Who you know, names their uh, horse Roach? What a mean thing to do. Like it's like. Naming your baby Smelly. 
Or name. Oh, it kicks! You're naming your dog Bark. Or Maggot. Why would you call your animal, like, after a bug? That's terrible. And this horse looks like a nice horse, too. It's not like. The horse is not like yeah, yeah, a just, po you know, bad horse. Like you know. Oh, you oh, can decapitate. Oh, and you're, oh, you're being wait, sniped so arrows oh, in your oh, back. Oh, there's a dude over there. Okay. okay, so what's the. Oh, you have. Is that. Was it magic? Did you put him yes, to sleep? That, that was magic, yeah. So I heard this game's a long game. It is a long game. It is gigantic. I... Wait, was that guy naked? No, he's got underwear. He's oh. mostly naked. <laughs> so I think more battles should take yeah. place that way. I've been saying it for years to developers that more of their people need to be. Well, you can tell it's like a, it's a you know it's a it's half like a nice, It's a nice hot day outside. So you know, yeah. I think if I was to get into battle and start looting people, I would do it half naked. I think okay. there's a, some benefit to that. Now I'm just going to heal up by meditating, which you can do. That would just let like a couple of hours pass. And Ooh, very nice and menu background. Suddenly I'm back in there and I'm back up to full health. Everything. Did you just sort of rest in the middle of the bushes? Yes, to level that's up? exactly what I did. Interesting. Yeah. Now the game. I wonder if that works in real life. The game is massive. It's a massive, massive game. Let's. I'll just show you. Okay. Here is the. This is the newbie area, mind you. Okay. And newbie area is that like? Are you talking? Everything that you see here is all just newbie tutorial zone. What is this? An MMO? No, it's an open world game. It feels like an MMO. It's a massive, massive open world game. So this is just the newbie area. Now, this is where I am on the world map. Oh, there's geez. Just this little newbie area here, and then there's this area over here, and then there's this area over here, and there's this area over here. Oh, man. And then there's these islands over here, so it's gigantic. Um, Do we know if Roach comes with air miles? Because I feel like you Roach get does a lot not come with air miles. Because no, I feel I'm, like you can get a lot of travel mileage out of this. You could, but uh, you know, it's like, yeah, unfortunately, such is not the case with Roach. Oh. So yeah, this is one of those games where like Skyrim or Fallout or you know even Dragon Age Inquisition, you can just hop right into the main quest or you know it's like if you want to have a little bit more fun and make yourself more powerful, you can just wander off the beaten path and just explore and see what's out there and come across the problem with a game like this for me is I would never beat it because I would just jump on the horse and I would just ride across this countryside watching and then maybe I'd fall asleep and I would sleep outside. Yeah. And I would just watch the scenery go by because it's very gorgeous. This is a gorgeous looking yeah. game. See, and I mean, and this, this is the issue I had when I was playing this game for review is that um, my review clocked, uh, my, my final time clocked in at um, quite a bit longer than what most people's did because if you're trying to rush this game and just finish it as quickly as possible, you're looking at 60 or 70 hours. Okay, so what is your character supposed to do in this newbie area? Where are we supposed to be going? Okay, well, the main, uh, I'll just call the horse up again. The main uh, goal that you have at this point is you are trying to track down more information about Siri herself That's because it, they've traced her um, whereabouts to this area. And you know, yeah, obviously Geralt is like, well, okay, fine, well, let's, let's just go then and see what's going down. So I guess I can do that. Um, I'll just... Okay, well, that's good. The horse has to stand... Oh, there we go. Can, can you kill him? Nope, that, that is actually your mentor. He's kind of like Geralt's Obi-Wan Kenobi who taught him everything he knew about being a Witcher. Oh, so Witcher is a class. A Witcher is a class. In this particular case, a Witcher specifically are children who have been subjected to all kinds of crazy magics and potions um, to become the ultimate monster hunters. And then they run around as mercenaries being paid to kill monsters by villagers, monarchs, or whoever else has the cash. Oh, cell swords. Yeah, they basically are, except that they specialize specifically in killing monsters. So whether it's a griffin or a zombie or whatever, yeah. Uh, but you know, oh, yeah, here they, comes something now. What is this? Oh, uh, that's a griffin. This is what we're looking at. Is oh, like, I always imagine them to be much more cuter than this. This is this is. Ooh, see, that's the interesting thing about um. I, Oof. You know, yeah, the, the the monsters in this game are all you know pretty brutal and vicious. Oh. And um, yeah, it, it, it takes a very special kind of guy because you know, I can you know, survive lethal mortal blows <laughs> to you, take these things on. I imagine lethal mortal blows are what it looks like. I hope this science can help bring back griffins. I think, oh, see, this griffin has the right idea. See, I don't yeah. know why people have never thought about that in my, like, it, when a boss comes mm -hmm. or a bad guy comes into a battle and they have an objective, take the objective and leave. Yeah. Why fight? I think that griffin had the right idea. The yeah. griffin's like, Listen, well, my, uh, she my just plan, wanted his food. That's yeah, it. So. Like the Griffin's like, I just wanted this horse. This horse was obviously delicious. Didn't have time to cook him. I'll eat him right here. Guy completely in white comes to attack me. Wow. Yeah. Time to leave. 
Right? Well, I mean, that, that's the interesting thing is that, you know, it's like even though these are magical creatures like, you know, griffins and sirens and all Unicorns? Sort of, Tell me there's a unicorn. Uh, Need to bathe in that there, blood. There are unicorns Ooh. in this game. You do see a unicorn. You see one unicorn. This game has sold me sold on the unicorn. That's, that's as much as I'll say. But yeah, they, they do tend to treat the monsters in this game like animals. Oh. Which is kind of the interesting thing uh, about the Witcher is that because he is a, you know, for hire monster killer, a lot of the side missions in this game are actually like talk to the client to find out what the problem is, find out what they need to do, gather as much information as you can, then go track the monster, figure out exactly what kind of monster you're dealing with, do your homework to figure out the best way to approach the monster, then set up your tactics, maybe find a way to lure it or find out where the lair of the monster oh. is, get your gear and equipment ready to fight that specific monster and then you know, go in and kill it. So it's not just like, uh, yes. here's the monster, go we kill it, you go, you do it, and then you get money and that's the end of it. It's like they actually treat them like full-on jobs oh. that require research and you know, it's like best practices approach. That's a very interesting approach. Like, I think when I, I think of that, I thought that kind of art of, in gaming was kind of dead. I didn't think that um, people wanted to go that in depth. That's like, that's in a very... Yeah, I mean... Committed. <laughs> you know, CD, CD Projekt Red themselves, they've got like, you know, um, uh, pretty much uh, a big PC legacy. And so, you know, it's like the... The first Witcher game was PC only. Um, the second Witcher game came out on the Xbox 360. And now this third Witcher game is like on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. But CD Projekt themselves have sort of retained their so, hardcore PC gamer RPG roots where they're like, our, Good. our customer base, they like in-depth, ridiculously complex games. Agree. And we're not going to um, you know, like dumb it down for console gamers in that regard. Some people would argue that, you know, it's like they've done that a little bit, but um, even if they have, by console standards, this is still an incredibly in-depth game. There's, there's like, you know, just a lot going on. And I would hope more developers would take that kind yeah. of approach, but it takes a certain kind of developer. Oh, you didn't even type a horse. What if he runs off? Uh, you can always just summon him again just uh. by pushing down on the left stick twice. So uh -huh. <laughs> If only it was that simple to summon horses yeah. in real life. Your horse is always just magically teleported to wherever you are just by pushing down on the left stick. Like real horses. Yeah. So we'll just skip through this cutscene. No this is basically just setting the stage for the I fact that the area that they're in has recently been conquered. So there's a lot of tension between the occupied people and the conquerors. So this is an interesting passage. How does things like your armor change or new yes, equipped weapons yes, change? You, yes, you get new gear. You can either find it or you can craft it. Or. So, um, and the best game, the, the best gear in this game is uh, usually uh, a the stuff that you craft yourself, which is, you know, Witcher specific gear. Ah. Which, you know, it's like makes sense. You know, it's like obviously if you're a Witcher, then stuff that's been made specifically for your class is going to be much more suitable than some sword or armor. He's a warrior and a some, master yeah. craftsman. Yeah. That's pretty Well, no, see, itself. actually, that's the thing. He's not a master craftsman. In oh. true in-depth RPG fashion, Thanks. he's got to go to armorsmiths or swordsmiths oh. to have this stuff made. He can't make it himself. Oh, and back to that. once again, to get even more unnecessarily in-depth, the various armorsmiths and swordsmiths have different skill levels. So if you've got like, you know, a master class sword or master class armor that you want made and you just take it to like a small village swordsmith, he'll be like, I, I can't do that. That's beyond my skill level. You gotta find somebody better than me to make that. That's sexy. Yeah. I think that uh, I like how that follows that no, this it's really gets me interested. Yeah. Um, the only problem is I wonder if someone you know, you'd obviously have to need have a good amount of chunk of time and commitment to a game like this. You do. You do. Want to see and experience a lot of this this world. This world seems incredibly deep, yeah. uh, which is something you're missing off from modern games. Oh, is and, the depth? Um, yeah. Just one thing I want to point out here is that uh, the Witcher uses a form of magic that Witchers call signs, and what signs are are just really low cast time magical spells that they can basically just pull off in an instant. And so they're all, you know, it's like focused on, you know, it's like combat and other stuff. But he's got one particular sign called Axie, which basically acts like a Jedi mind trick. So 
uh, because I've already poured some skill points into Axie, I have an option right now to just get these people to tell me what I want by you know selecting the Axie option where yeah, he just waves his hand. Oh, and all of a sudden this guy Very is just going to tell me exactly what I want to know. Very Jedi. And there you go. So there are some situations where you can just avoid a fight entirely by using the Axie sign to just you know, get people to do what you want. Now I can I can see why uh, this game is so well loved. It is very similar to. Yeah, I mean it's like all of this. It stuff. touches on a lot of yeah. our you know our fantasy sci-fi. Yeah. Uh, all, all, all of this stuff is being pulled from the yeah, original so novel source material. So I mean it's like you know it, it is kind of like you know just imagine that you know you're a huge Game of Thrones fan and somebody made a Game of Thrones game to this level. Where there's just like all the things that you love about Game of Thrones, we did not throw them away for the sake of you know gaming experience. <laughs> we just threw it all in here. So you know, just go nuts, enjoy Looking yourself. Of course. Oh, that's actually that exci that's exciting. That's yeah. exciting to think that um, developers like this still exist. And now, obviously, there's a bit of ignorance on my part because I, you know, I'm a bit cynical where I thought games like this had gone the way of the dodo yeah. and pretty much yeah, see, it, been it's extinct. Like, it's, it's kind of weird. City Project Red is in a weird way uh, a dinosaur of game development, but in a good way in that they're still... Their technique you know, seems yeah, very still modern. still nitpickers for detail and all that sort of thing, but... Yeah, so... So does the dialogue affect the storyline? Yes, yes, oh. it completely does. It's like, you know, certain Not dialogue... a Mass Effect thing going on here. Certain dialogue choices that you make, certain My actions guys. that you choose will have fairly profound dramatic effects on how different storylines in this game play out. Because there are multiple storylines. Ooh, so Mor multiple storylines, multiple endings? Or multiple yes, there are multiple endings. There's like a total of over 30 endings in this game. 30 it's endings? Nuts. It's, it's just completely insane. Whoa, just fell right back into 2003. Yeah. I can't do the last time I've had a multiple ending more than three yeah, in a game. It's, it's crazy, and of, of course the endings are dependent on you know, who you've talked to, who you've allied with, who's, who's alive and who's dead by the time you get to the end, all that stuff. Oh my Whether goodness. or not certain people like you or don't. So. And here I was praising Mass Effects for their three colored endings. Yeah, well, Jeez. It's, yeah, Mass Effect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's impressive. I think that's, uh... Looking for a... I'm, I'm kind of warming up this game. At first I was like, when we first started this, uh... Playthroughs, playthrough. I was like, "Ooh, I don't know." But it, it it is a big game. I mean, it's like if you actually want to fully explore everything that this game has to offer, then you're probably looking at easily 200 hours. Or 200. No, yeah, like I like I said, the reviewers that rushed through this to just finish the game as quickly as possible, it took them 60 or 70 hours, and that was a speed run. 60 to 70 hours. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, so uh, yeah, it's 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 a gigantic, massive. You know, it's like for those people that just wish that they could go on a vacation in another world, yes. this game is kind of like that. There's just so I much to do. I need to strap my like some yeah. VR on my head and I need to play this game. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, there's so much to do. There are so many places to go. It's like it it really is the high water mark. I mean, I I'm fairly certain that um, it's going to be a strong contender for the RPG of the year. I mean, it's like I know that. Is that Fallout time 4? in the corner? Like time of like the time of day and the sun, the yes, weather? Yes, that's right. Yes, because there are day-night cycles. There's weather. It oh my rains, God, it, it can snows. rain? Yes, it can rain. Oh my goodness. This game needs to be made into a virtual world. Yeah, so. Here we come, so Sword Art like, Online. Yeah, his, his beard grows. You know, the sun rises and sets. It rains, it snows, the wind blows through the Don't trees. Man, the only thing that's missing is like his weight. Like if you let him eat too much or he wanders, doesn't walk around enough, he gets bigger. Man, can you imagine? These games, games are getting so much, oh! Can you mess up his hair? Does he bleed? Uh, he can get different hairstyles anyways. Different hairstyles? Yeah, you can go to the barber. Oh, someone, someone's spoken to my language. I'm an aesthetic gamer, so I like, you know, changing my, my character's clothes, dyeing their hair. Did the horse just run off? No, it's just panicking. It usually panics when there's a class. Calm down, little horsey. What happened to your mentor? He totally disappeared on this. No, he was just sitting it out because he knows that you can easily handle this. So. Uh, well, these are just vagrants. So, it should be easy peasy. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like, yeah, so, you know, it's like, that's done. Do we have any sort of Zelda feature where if we kick the chicken, a m multiple chickens attack you? Uh, mm, I don't know, actually. I never did try attacking the chicken. Then the answer should be clearly that you should attack let's, let's a chicken. Let's try attacking a chicken. Well, I don't know if a knife is a, a fair... Oh my god, is it bleeding? 
Oh, oh my I goodness! Killed okay. We killed the chicken. I did kill the chicken. Oh, Wayne, I knew you had it in you. All right. Wayne so the chicken slayer. There you go. Yeah. I've always felt that um, chickens were foul creatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh uh, that's sagacious wit, Drake. Right? Yeah, well. Like, yeah. This is, I don't uh, even know where I'm supposed to go now. How far is this? Um, well, next point that they this is clearly. And I don't know if the video game award is where things like that are released, but I'm guessing this is going to be one of those games that take in a whole lot of uh, prizes home. Question is, what's the musical score like? What are we, ta what are um, we, what are we talking you're about? Kind of, kind of your standard issue big orchestral score. The sort of thing that you would expect from a fantasy game. Anything over, anything over the top? Any in interesting people conducting the music? Uh, not anybody that I was familiar with, so... No John Williams? No, oh my no, goodness. No, no John Williams, so... Oh, we're so close. I guess you can't get them all. Any, any major voice actors in this game? Um, no, nobody huge. Uh, uh, not no, really? No, Troy Bakers or Nolan North. So Troy Baker, where are you? Oh, I'll tell you, these days Troy Baker is a pretty big deal, isn't he? he oh, he is. Troy Baker has pretty much voiced every character I've ever fallen in love with. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, you're a he, Troy Baker fan. I'm a big Troy Baker fan. He was Yuri Lowell. Um, he was also Prince Nizel from Code Geass. But I digress. Um, he was oh, can you cook? In Persona 4. He was, oh, he's so many. Can you cook in this? Can you eat? Like, do you have to eat? You do have to eat. Yeah. Like, what happens? Does he get, a, does he get sluggish if he doesn't eat? Uh, no, actually, in this game, eating is healing. That's all it is. So oh. you're, you're not going to starve to death if Damn. you don't eat. Um, what about swimming? You can swim. Can you drown? Uh, yes, you can drown. <laughs> that would have been a pretty big oversight. You, you can actually take a magical potion called like Orca or Whale or something like that. I forget what. Which Hot. will extend your breath so that you can swim underwater for even longer periods of time. Now, since we're talking about mythical creatures, are there mermaids? Of a sort, yes. Yes, How do you have a sort of a mermaid? Well, I mean, there, there are creatures which ostensibly you could say that they're female on the top half and they have tails, but they don't really look like, you know, Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Oh, um, now you got me like interested. That, so. Are we talking about they're just not very... Are you just judging them and thinking they're not very good looking? Um, you were pretty picky, aren't you? Well, you I like mean, it's like I'm pretty sure that that was CD Projekt's intent was to not make them aesthetically pleasing. Unattractive but, mermaids? Yeah. Oh, this is just a crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why you gotta kill them. No. Well, you know, oh, then, then oh. Then they usually tend to kill people, so, you know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> just, I see yeah. now. Oh, controversial. Yeah. Well, you know what? I guess a mermaid is technically a mythical creature. It is. Technically, sh I hear that, you know, they also used to lure sailors to their doom. So they could be probably pretty problematic, like uh, gophers. Oh, yeah, they, they, they do that sort of thing around here as well. So. Or like water gophers. Yeah. Destroying your ships and eating your coral gardens. I imagine that that's exactly why they probably someone would hire you. Is oh, oh well. can you hunt these deer? Yeah, actually you can. Man, this game has thought of everything. Yeah. Can you so use the washroom? Um, no. Ah. No, that you Aha. cannot do. It's like yeah, I, I, you know, it's like now that you mention it, I don't think that I've seen an outhouse or anything similar in this game. Can you fornicate? Yes. Yes, you can. Aha. This game keeps luring me back in. Yeah, so you almost lost me with the poop, but now you brought me back with the love. Okay, so you know, it's like, yeah, you can you can totally totally do that. And oh, we, we have slaughter this? going on here. Sign of a ghost. Maybe it only shows oh man, a okay, uh, yeah, this this is a this is actually kind of like a, a ghost busting case, so to speak. Um, it's a it's another one of the contracts that Geralt can take, um, where there's a ghost at this well, which has basically made this particular section of village deserted because it's just so hostile. So I usually find wells pretty hostile yeah. myself. So Geralt has got to go and investigate using what they call Witcher Sense, which is basically like detective vision in Batman uh. or assassin vision in Assassin's Creed. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so, you know, it's like here he is. He's investigating the clues. He's trying to gather up more details so he knows exactly what it is that he's facing off against. And then he will formulate an appropriate strategy based on... He will or you will? Well, he will... He will know what the appropriate strategy is, but it's up to you to look it up and actually follow it. What, you how can, to fight the creature? Yeah, you, can, so to, you like can totally ignore the advice and try and fight it the hard way, and okay. you'll probably die. Oh. Or you can follow the advice. And <laughs> <laughs> so will the strategy be something like telling you the weak points of the, bat, the enemy and how to fight him? And the, the weak points, the tactics, all of that stuff, yeah. Oh, so. but you could essentially just go and fight it. 
You could, but it would be strongly ill-advised. Like, for instance, in the case of the ghost that we're investigating here, it's a ghost, right? Right. Therefore, it has the ability to turn itself completely intangible so that you can just wave your sword around and hit nothing. Expelliarmus. Yeah. However, if you do your research, you realize that one of uh, Geralt's signs, um, called Yurden or Erden, whatever, um, it lays down a magical circle around him so that any ghostly things that enter that circle will immediately solidify. Will you have to go find this sign or will you... No, you've got it. You, oh, yeah. so the, the, you've secret got it is, is, so the secret is to learn about The your secret is doing your homework so that you know to do ah. that. If you decide, yeah, I'm just going to jump in and start swinging swords, like I said, you can do that and you'll probably die. Or if you do your homework, you'll realize, aha, this is how the ghost fights. If I cast this Yordan sign, then, you know, it's like, I, and here it is. I'll just cast it now. So there. If I cast this, then whenever the ghost enters this circle, it will solidify and I will be able to hit it. Oh. But it's only if you bother to do the homework. That's kind of like that, something out of a, a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. You know, yeah, so there, there is something, you know, it's like almost Pokemon-ish about it in that well, sense. There is. Where, you know, the creatures have various strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to you to decide whether or not to exploit those in your favor. Well, you have things like such and such creature is only more powerful in the day and you have to wait out for the day or the night or something like that. Yeah, some of them are actually also like that as well. Yeah. They so only do well in the winter yeah. and you don't have to wait till it snows. No, that's attractive. Um, so in this case, because this is one of the tutorial ones, they're like, you know, telling you, you know, introducing you to the bestiary and, you know, showing that you've got to read up on this stuff. Okay, so well, we don't have time to really go hunt down a ghost. Yeah. But, uh... I think that that's, this is that's a small, small, tiny electron microscopic sense of everything that the Witcher has to offer, which is a lot. Uh, it's probably going to end up being my RPG of the year. So I, I, if you finish it this year. Oh, I finished it. What? It, just, it took me a very, very long time. A very, very long time. Oh, my goodness, Wayne. Impressive. Yeah. All right, so that's, so that's our, that's our playthrough of The Witcher. That's I'm The Witcher Drekken. 3. And I'm Wayne, and this was The Witcher 3. See you guys later.